My name is Alex Normandou. I'm a research scientist with the Geological Survey of Canada, which is part of Natural Resources Canada. Every summer we go out at sea on Coast Guard ships to uh, study submarine landslides, and one of the regions we've been studying in the last few years is Baffin Bay. So in 2018, uh, we took the CCGS Hudson and we navigated to Baffin Bay, and we did a bunch of studies both on the continental slope, but also in the fjords uh, more inland studying the fjords, the more controlled environment where we can understand specific processes related to landslides. And so while we were sailing in Southwind Fjord, we also saw an iceberg just there in the water floating around. And we didn't really think anything at the time. We just thought it was a nice iceberg. We took a bunch of photos. And then we left the fjord with all the data to try to understand why are some marine landslide happening. The next year in 2019, we came back to collect more sediment information and what we discovered in 2019, a year after, is that a new landslide had happened uh, since the last time we had sailed. And then by looking at satellite imagery, because there's satellite imagery every few days in this region, we could then see that the iceberg that we saw the previous year in 2018 had grounded and had capsized, so it flipped over, impacted the bottom, and then triggered a submarine landslides. And so by making this observation, we were able to discover a new trigger of submarine landslides um, in northern environments. So one of the main things we do in marine geoscience is map the seabed. And to do that, we use multi-beam echo sounders. Essentially, it's similar to the echo sounder you would have on any boat, but instead of having just one uh, beam going right directly under the ship, it goes over 100, 120 degrees on each, uh, uh, under the, the ship. And so you can see the seabed the same way you can see land from satellite imagery. And using that data, we can then reconstruct what's, what's on the seafloor at a given date. Now, one of the problem with that is that usually when we map the seabed, we have only one image of the seabed. So we don't see the dynamic nature, how sediments are moving under the seabed. So for that, we have certain sites in Canada that we try to repeat the mapping every uh, year or, or even less in some cases to try to understand how the seabed moves over time. One of those sites is Southwind Fjord. And in 2018, we used the multi-beam echo sounders like we see behind here to map the seabed, came back in 2019, used the same instruments, and then we compare the data and we can see that there are new features under the water that, that appear or disappear in some cases. And so with those two data, we were able to see that new landslide that had happened in the fjord. And that's extremely rare that we catch a new landslide in such a short period of time like that. So we could take that opportunity to really understand what triggers some landslides. Then we looked at the past year with satellite imagery to see if there was anything happening. We looked at earthquakes. We tried to examine a bunch of processes that could have triggered that landslide. And what we saw from the satellite imagery is that there was that iceberg that came into the fjord and then capsized, impacted the seabed, and triggered the submarine landslide. Then using sediment cores, we can also try to see if the sediments are prone to failure or not, and if that iceberg would indeed have been impactful enough to trigger a submarine landslide. So by combining satellite imagery, sediment cores, and multi-beam bathymetry, we were able to discover a new trigger of submarine landslides, uh, which is the iceberg uh, mechanism. So there are many reasons why we study submarine landslides. There's the infrastructures offshore, and there's also tsunamis. So we know that tsunamis can be generated by, by earthquakes, but also by a sudden movement of, of land underwater, which is a landslide. Now, if we go to the northern environment, right now there's a lot of talks to try to connect some of the communities with fiber optic cables to get better internet. Further uh, down the south, there's some talks about having renewable energy, so putting wind farms. And so it's important to understand what are the hazards on the seafloor. Among the hazards, we often talk about earthquakes, but then we also saw with this study that uh, actually the iceberg, when they scrub the seafloor, they can trigger submarine landslides. And the thing with submarine landslides is that they can go far deeper than what the iceberg can do. So the iceberg will affect only the, the first few hundred meters of the seafloor, but then the landslide itself can extend down to a few thousands of meters down slope. So it, it can impact deeper than, than the actual iceberg itself. So it's an important discovery for infrastructure off offshore, just to know that it can happen and to try to mitigate for these uh, hazards. So right now there's about 20% of our oceans that are mapped. 
the remaining 80% is unchartered at a sufficient resolution uh, to really see what's on the, uh, what's on the seafloor. The Moon and Mars are better mar mapped than our own oceans. And that is really a problem because you cannot manage what you don't know. And since 80% of our oceans are unmapped, uh, there's still a lot of work for us to do to map the ocean. And then once we have mapped the ocean once, then we need to start remapping the ocean many times because that's where you can see what processes are happening on the seafloor. When we map the ocean only once, we see what has happened in the past, but you don't see what, has ha what is happening currently. And so remapping the ocean will then become something that's uh, very important, just like we're doing with satellite imagery. And that's really one of the main reasons why I love my job is because 80% of the seafloor, 80% of where we go, is currently uncharted. We have no idea what we'll find in these locations. So we're always discovering new things. And that's really motivating for a job to, to really do discovery every year just because we're mapping a new, a new part of the ocean. And some years we make bigger discoveries like, like the icebergs triggering submarine landslides. And some other years we don't make big discoveries, but we're still contributing to that uh, gigantic amount of data that we need to manage our oceans. If you like this video, let us know with a thumbs up. Click on the logo below to subscribe to the Simply Science channel and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos.